Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Christ Lutheran Vale Church. I'm Pastor Hook, and this is Josh. CLV is streaming our worship services this morning, and we're so happy and excited to be with you all today. Don't forget to follow our Facebook page, Christ Lutheran Vale Church, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Both have tons of great content to help you with your walk with God. You can also follow us on Instagram at CLV Church for another way to stay connected during the week. Now, if you're new to us, we'd love to connect with you a little bit better. You can text the word welcome to our church phone number displaying on the screen right now, and we'll send you a few texts to tell you about our church, and hopefully we'll learn more about how we can serve you. So Pastor, Christmas is only 26 days away. It will soon be here. What's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? Well, I don't know. In our household, if you do anything more than twice, it becomes a tradition. But one thing that I really like is to walk around Winter Haven and look at all the Christmas lights. I heard it was canceled this year because of COVID. Oh, that's what I heard too. But just because we can't see those lights doesn't mean that we can't celebrate the light. That is right. Our messages this month are based on the light. In this series, we'll learn about the light that came into the world and the light that shines in the darkness. But first, we're going to worship God with some praise and some singing. And as we get started focusing our attention on God, why don't you just take a moment to greet one another in the comments and we'll get ready to sing.
fire-filled fire from above And I've been down to the river mm -hmm. I ain't the same a prodigal Today we are talking about the light. At Christ Lutheran Vale, we celebrate everyone who finds the love of Jesus, particularly in these times of change. If you have given to CLV, you are our partner in forwarding our mission, making loving disciples. Through programs like the Helping Hands Fund, where we provide food and short-term assistance to those who have emergency needs, we show the love of Jesus by letting him use our hands and feet to serve our community. Our goal is to show our neighbors, loved ones, and friends Christ's deep and unending love in this world. Whether you have given before or you would like to do so for the first time, you can invest in our mission by going to ChristLutheranVail.org and clicking on I Want to Give at the top right of the page. You'll have a chance right now to do that if you would like. Thank you so much for helping us to bring Christ's light and love to our community. And now our deacon, Larry Unger, has a message for us. He's going to talk about the light that shines in the darkness. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. And if you look up the word Advent in Webster's Dictionary, it will tell you it is the coming of an event and when Jesus Christ first came into the world. Christ is the light of the world, and this will be the emphasis on all of the messages throughout our Advent season. 
light. So let's go back a couple of years and see when light first came into the world. Let's go to Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Now there are two words there that I think are very important. One is light, and one is dark. We might feel like the year 2020 could be called a dark year because of the excessive heat, the lack of rain, the pandemic being locked in. And have you had some dark times during this period of time? Now, is God in control? Yes, he is. We don't know the mind of God, but we do know the will of God. He wants all people to be saved and come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What he does, he tells us over and over. So let's look at some other probably catastrophic events as far as the world is concerned. How about, let's use the example of the flood. Noah's Ark, etc. And when God does something like this, he even leaves evidence of that in the past. You know, we lived in southeast Idaho for many years, and if you wanted a plane uh, ticket that would give you uh, a direct flight, you had to go to Salt Lake. And we would drive down I-15, and as we kind of entered Utah, we would look up at the foothills on the side, and there would be some little shelves, and these were shorelines of the Great Salt Lake as it gradually emptied, probably after the flood that some of those shorelines go up at least 100 feet. The Salt Lake is just a pool today of what it was at another time. So we know that some of these events God causes and others he just simply allows. What he wants us to know he tells us over and over. And things that he might allow we just simply wonder about. But one of the most important things that God tells us over and over is about Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, how he rose again, and how he is our forgiveness of sins. He tells us that in the New Testament, in all the Gospels, in all of God's writings, in every book of the New Testament nearly, he tells us what he wants us to know. We also know that when man fell into sin, it allowed some spiritual warfare to enter too. Several years ago, we did a Bible study on a book written by Pastor Jerry Cosberg. He was also our ministry and mission facilitator when we started CLV. The name of the book is In His Mighty Power, and we have a couple of copies of it in our church library, and it's really worth reading. It's, a very, it's not necessarily an easy read, but it's a quick read. It's only about a third of an inch thick, so you could read it, and, and I would really recommend it if you haven't read it. But he tells us in that book that our greatest weapon against the powers of darkness is prayer. We ask God to bind Satan's hand. Now with this pandemic going on, we really can find ourselves in a dark place. There's a lot of discussion on TV now about mental illness and depression caused by COVID-19. It might be helpful for us to look back at some others in the past to see how they were affected by catastrophic events. So let's go back and look particularly at those in service to God as church leaders. One was a man named Spurgeon. It was in the 18th century and he was a Baptist pastor in England and he was battling some false doctrine, but he continued to persevere and in time he founded a pastor's college and an orphanage, and he's known for some real great sermons and sayings, and he has a lot of quotes that pastors use even today. 
But he stated that he was most depressed just before God was preparing a great blessing for his ministry. Perhaps we might look forward to things that we've learned throughout this COVID-19 epidemic, no matter how difficult it was. And we mourn and we pray for those who have lost loved ones through this epidemic or who are suffering. But perhaps in the future, we'll look back and say, yes, I learned this and this. Now, another name we might be more familiar with was a man named Luther. He faced a lot of opposition in the Reformation, but he had also help from other men who were involved in the battle and they prayed for one another. One man was named Melanchthon. I hope I have pronounced that correctly, but he was involved with Luther in the Reformation. And one time Luther wrote a letter to him about a period of depression, and I'd like to quote from that letter. He said, I spent more than a week in death and hell. My entire body was in pain and I still tremble, completely abandoned by Christ. I labored under the vacillations and storms of depression and blasphemy against God. But through the prayers of the saints, his friends, God began to have mercy on me and pulled my soul from the infernal below. I think it's important to note that through the prayer of his friends, prayer is our greatest ally. So now I have a question for you. Has this COVID-19 epidemic improved your prayer life? It surely has mine. I have a much longer list of folks that I pray for every night than I used to have. Now the men I have mentioned knew where their strength came from, and so do we. But Jesus is the light of the world, and I'd like to quote a couple of verses from Isaiah. This first one is 58, 8. It says, then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Now, Isaiah was known as the Messianic prophet, but he lived some 700 years before Christ's birth, and he was appointed as a prophet to the Israel, Israelite nation. And the first part of the book, maybe over half of it, he talks about all of their sins and tells them what they need to do, that they need to return to the Lord and tells them what might happen if they do not. And in the latter part of the book of Isaiah, he talks about Jesus coming and all of those prophecies came true in the New Testament. But I'd like to share one other verse from Isaiah and it is from Isaiah 6 verse 8. It was Isaiah's commissioning. He had a vision from God. And he heard a voice saying, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people. And he went and he did for many years at least 50 or so. So as I bring this real short message to a close, I'd like to share the fact that, that those words of Isaiah's commissioning has just been going through my mind over and over for the past few weeks, particularly when I walked into this building. And I see what has happened. When we open our hearts and minds to work in the kingdom of God. He uses everything that we have, every gift and talent in the most remarkable ways. We've looked back at the history of CLV kind of often as we occupy the building. And I'm not going to go back there, but I do want to go back just a bit further and that was the day that Pastor Michelson asked me if I would come as an elder to kind of help oversee the start of a mission church in Vail. He said that it had been 
the desire of pastors at Fountain of Life Lutheran Church for a number of years to get a mission church started here, and he thought the time had come. And I said, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. He told me that Dick Phillips had also agreed to do this, and so I talked to Dick this past week and said, Dick, do you remember when this took place? And he said, well, I don't necessarily remember that day, but I do remember him talking to me. And he said that Pastor Michelson told him something like this, that we should be fishers of men. And there were a great pool of people out in the Vale area, and we needed to cast our nets in that pool. And then he asked us to find one other person. And so we asked Paul Schaefer, and he agreed to help us also. So now there's three couples, Paul and Kay. Kay, a few months ago, went on to be with her risen Lord and Savior, Dick and Polly, Lola and I, and we had a lot of help from folks at Fountain of Life and a mission grant and things such as this. I don't think any of us feel that we were heroic in any way, but I do remember people asking uh, Dick and Paul and I, as we were visiting when we dedicated the ministry center, if we ever thought that this would really happen. And we said that without a doubt, we knew that it would happen. Now, I don't know what was the vision of CLV in other folks' minds. I knew we'd have a church here, but I thought, well, maybe a little white church, you know, with a tower and a bell that you'd ring up there when it was time for the service to start. But God has blessed us with all of the tools that we need to be a great force here in the Vail community and beyond. And I know that as I look out here and I think about all of the people that have been with us on this journey, that have opened their hearts and minds to work in Christ's kingdom, and how much has been done. We have all the tools here now to be a force, as I have said, in the Vail community. But I have one more statement. Do you remember the Carpenters? They had a song, and it was, we have only just begun, and I feel the same way. We have only just begun. Will you pray with me? God, we lift up all of those that are suffering through this virus epidemic. Most of all, I ask that you give us all the strength to go on and to place our trust completely in you. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Let his face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.